do, Hallelujah. beginning at the very first verse. Amen. Hallelujah. What most people don't realize, what is written in Ezekiel, it be was fulfilled in the book of Revelations. As I told you, the book of Ezekiel and Revelations are almost carbon copies one of another. Yes, they are. Ezekiel spoke of uh, these things, and in Revelation they were fulfilled. And this is one I want to show you tonight. Because the, two, the prophets all spoke of the first coming of the Lord. Amen. Yep. Hallelujah. And that's something the Lord has placed in my heart to continue to study. Amen. Yes. And I really began to realize I had to do and understand what the prophets of the Old Testament were saying. Hallelujah. That the Jewish nation did not understand. Because all these prophecies were fulfilled in the book of Revelation and throughout the New Testament with the first coming of the Lord. So I want to take you to the book of Ezekiel tonight to show you there was prophesied many things that are all fulfilled in the book of Revelation. As you know, the Jewish, the Old Testament, all the prophets of the Jewish Testament were Jewish and they were writing to the nation of Israel. But Israel was divided between Judah and Israel. So all the prophets were writing to them. And basically what they told them, you need to repent. Yes. God has on all your abominations and all these things you are doing. Amen. I'm trying to work through a nation. Hallelujah. And they broke the covenant that God made with them on Mount Sinai. Amen. So I want to show you why the new covenant had to come into place. Amen. Hallelujah. The new covenant had to come Amen. because the people that were to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophets, they did not fulfill them. Nope. As a matter of fact, they became worse yes. than the nations that they were trying to convert. Mm -hmm. That's sad, isn't it? Terrible. But they were God's chosen people. Amen. And as I showed you another week, now it's the church that is the chosen people of God. Yes. Whether you're Jew or Gentile, yeah. You come into salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go to Ezekiel 2 and verse 1. He said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, for I will speak unto thee. Hallelujah. And this, the rest of the book of Ezekiel tells you what he told him. He said, you stand on your feet. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to speak to you. But I'm going to send you to a rebellious nation. He noticed one thing, he calls it a rebellious house. The house of Israel, he called them rebellious. Yeah. Remember what he said to David when David wanted to build him a house? Yeah. He said, David, I'm going to build you a house. A house. That's right. yeah. The house he was talking about is the new covenant through Christ, yes, amen. the church of the living God. Yeah. Because the old house he called Israel the house and they did not fulfill what he had spoken. So he said, stand on your feet, Ezekiel, I'm going to speak to you. And I want you to go speak to a rebellious nation, a rebellious house. Let's go to verse 2. And the Spirit entered into me. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yeah. The Lord, while he was there, he allowed his Spirit to enter into him. Mm -hmm. And he spake unto me, and he said, set me upon my feet that I heard him, and that I heard him that spake unto me. Would I remember what I told you before? The prophets, before they, they speak the words forth, they always come into the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. And God tells them to what to speak, what to say. Amen. And he also makes them, as the Bible teaches, he makes their foreheads hard so that they are able to resist the people that are contrary to the Lord. Their jobs of the prophets was to go tell Israel, this is your condition, change, repent, and turn back to God, or judgment will come upon you. You ever read in the Old Testament to talk about the day of the Lord? Hallelujah. You know what the day of the Lord is? What just Jensen was just reading, the salvation of the Lord, Amen. but it was also a judgment upon the old covenant people. That's what Revelation is about, is judgment that comes upon yeah. because they rejected the Christ and they rejected 
the new covenant. Yes. But God said, I'm going to make a covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So the covenant was to come to them. But they rejected the mediator of the new covenant, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot reject the mediator in the covenant and still remain the people of God. Because of their condition, it caused judgment to fall upon them. And I'm going to show you the words that the Lord God gave to Ezekiel. When God sends you, he sends you with a direct word. Let's go to verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel. So we know quite well who he was sent to. Mm -hmm. The nation of Israel. Clear. To what? A rebellious talking? nation that has rebelled against me. me. Or they rebelled against God. That's right. So you see what he is going when he's going to this nation of Israel. He's going with the words, you're a rebellious nation. You rebelled against your God. Hallelujah. Rebellious against me, they and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. Mm -hmm. The very day that Ezekiel was talking about, their forefathers. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that in the New Testament. Because the, the, the Pharisees said unto Jesus, we're not like our forefathers. But Jesus said, you're just like them. Exactly. Yeah. They killed the prophets that I sent to them, yeah. so and you're going to kill me. Yes, they will. Yeah. You know, in I think it's chapter 21, they said, they saw that Jesus was the heir. He said, kill. Let's kill him and end up being the heir. Yeah, take it. There's only one heir. Only one. That's the Lord himself of the Jesus new covenant. Christ. Amen. They thought by killing him, they would become the heirs. But this is what also caused the great judgment to come upon them because they rejected. Amen. They rejected him as high priest. They rejected him as the mediator of the new covenant. Amen. And exactly what he came to do. And that's why the book of Revelation is establishing the new covenant. As it says in Daniel 9, 27. We won't go to it, but it's saying it's the covenant is being, being fulfilled or being completely Completely right. Maybe I should go to it so I don't misquote it. Daniel 9, 27. says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And this is what Christ did during the one week, the seven years. Yep. He was cut off in the midst of the seven years, the yes. book of Daniel tells you. Yep. So this tells you chapter 9, 24 through 27, it's talking about the new covenant would be established by the Lord, but in the midst of the seven years, the 70th week, the Messiah would be cut off. He would die. And that's according to the scripture that was given to the Jewish nation in order to establish the new covenant wherein you free receive forgiveness of sins. Amen. Under the old covenant, you could not receive forgiveness of sins. They just pushed him ahead from year to year. But there was not a sacrifice that would cause the sins of man to be forgiven until the coming of the true Lamb of God, Amen. our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Behold the Lamb of God who cometh, John says, Amen. to take away the sins of the world. Amen. So who is it that takes away the sins of the world? Jesus the mediator Christ. of the new covenant, Jesus Christ. Christ. Right. Hallelujah. Let's go to Jeremiah 3, verse 25. I want to go there to show you that all the prophets that were, from, that were coming to the Jewish nation, they basically had one thing to say to Israel. Repent. Turn back to God. Repent. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hope I got the right way. Amen. He said, we lie down. This is Israel speaking. We lie down in our shame and our confusion covereth us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God. We and our fathers from our youth even unto this day. 
and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. They had one of the, the greatest prophets of the Old Testament give them commandments. He gave them the Ten Commandments, which was none other than Moses, who God spoke to face to face. Amen. What did the people of Israel say? Whatever the Lord tells you, we will do it. They made a covenant with God right there at Mount Sinai, the people. said, so whatever he tells you, we will do it. And that's where the covenant of the Old Testament began with the Ten Commandments. Now let's go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 22 and verse 21. Thank you, Jesus. He says, Jeremiah says, I will speak unto thee in, the, in thy prosperity, but thou saidest, I will not hear this, has been no the manner from thy youth, that thou obeyest not my voice. Hallelujah. And that's why I want to go now to Acts 13, verse 27. It tells you that the Jewish people did not obey the voice of God because they did not know him. The Bible says if they would have known he was the Christ, they would have never have crucified him. But they didn't know it. They continued to ask him and tried to trick him. Are you really the Christ? The high priest, I believe it was Caiaphas, asked him, are you now the high priest? You know what the Lord said? You have said that I am. He was the new covenant high priest. Hallelujah. And he was speaking to the old covenant high priest. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go to Acts 13, 27. Hallelujah. If you notice the prophets in the Old Testament, they're speaking especially to the city of Jerusalem. That's why in, in the book of Revelation, you're watching the destruction of the old religious system. Hallelujah. In the city of Jerusalem. These prophets said, if you don't turn to God, I will leave your city desolate. The book of Isaiah also tells in the manner that God will bring judgment. Amen. There are four types of judgment that God brings upon people. Pestilence, beast, famine. What's the other one? Famine, pestilence. Beast. Beast, yeah. Sword. Alley, the sword, correct. Thank you. The sword was the fourth one. And all these things the book of Revelation says that came upon that city. Amen. As you look through the Bible, that city is none other than Jerusalem. It is Jerusalem. That was God's headquarter for place. all the religions. You wonder why Jesus said in John chapter 4, said you will no longer worship me in this mountain in Samaria or in Jerusalem. Because yeah. I seek for people to come to worship me in spirit. And in truth, he says, you won't worship me here anymore. Yeah. You'll worship him anywhere. That's right. He's established yes. through the whole world yes. Amen. this covenant to the Gentile nation yes. too, yes. who is us. Amen. But let's go to Acts 13, 27. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voice of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Hallelujah. Every Sabbath they came. The laws and the prophets were read to them. But they didn't hear the voice. Amen. The voice is telling them simply repent, turn to your God. Amen. Or judgment will come. Yep. That's exactly what all the prophets. Yep. And the prophets made it known who the book of Revelation was talking about. Because God through the prophet Ezekiel and Hosea called the nation of Jerusalem and the city of Jerusalem and the nation of Israel. The whore. Yep. Put it bluntly, that's what they called him. What they called him. Because God was their husband. Yep. Amen. And all the things they did was contrary Amen. to their husband. Amen. You wonder why the Bible speaks so strong about the relationship of husband and wife? Mm -hmm. That's why your true Israel was not true. Yep. So he calls them an adulterous generation. Amen. He said at one time in the city of Jerusalem, righteousness was there, but now Prosperity. just Murderers. Murderers yeah. Hallelujah. And what did they do on the day that Christ was to cruci be crucified? Who did they choose instead of... Who did they choose? They choose to mur a murderer. That's the condition of Jerusalem at the time the Lord was coming. Amen. So now let's go back to verse 4. 
He's here the Lord is telling to Ezekiel, were they an imp impudent children, stiff-necked, I do send thee unto them, and they shall say, you shall say unto them, thus saith the Lord. So when Ezekiel was speaking to him, he was speaking the words that the Lord had given him to speak with him, because the Lord was just right there with him, telling him to go speak these words to the nation of Israel. They're, they're, they're rebellious. Hallelujah. Now let's go to Ezekiel 3 and verse 7. Hallelujah. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. Yeah. For all the house, you notice it says the house of Israel, yeah. are impudent and hard-hearted. Yes, Hallelujah. They would not listen to his prophets. No. That's why later on in the book of Revelation it tells you this judgment has come upon those that killed the prophets. And Jesus in the book of Matthew Amen. tells them it was you that killed the prophets. Yes, it was. Hallelujah. So we begin to understand deeper the prophecies of the Old Testament that were literally fulfilled through the first coming of Christ, setting up his church, his new covenant, and his kingdom. That's what the Old Testament is all about, the first coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Every prophet spoke of him, the Bible says, spoke of his first coming. Hallelujah. And it tells you that his own people, Israel, would reject him. They would not hear the voice of the prophets. Hallelujah. Let's go back to verse 5. The Lord is still speaking to Ezekiel. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall they yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. Hallelujah. God was showing to the nation of Israel that Ezekiel was the prophet that he sent to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He continued to give them, but they would continue to kill the prophets that were sent to him. Now let's go to verse 6. They used the word in the Old Testament, the Son of Man, because Ezekiel was a prophet. Okay? And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. You see, they're calling Israel again a house. Amen. Rebellious to God and to all the voices of the prophets. Hallelujah, they would not hearken. To show you that all the prophets spoke in this manner to Israel, and they rejected them, let's go to be Jeremiah chapter 1-8. Because the Lord says the very same thing to Jeremiah that he said to the prophet Ezekiel. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. They were not to fear, even though these were fierce people and they were rebellious. He said, you go talk to them anyway, because I will be with you. Amen. So he sent people like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, even Daniel spoke to them. Yeah. Hallelujah. And all the rest of the minor prophets, beginning with Hosea, all of them. Habakkuk, all of those yeah. were speaking to the nation of Israel to get them to repent. Verse 7 and I said, and thou shalt speak my words unto them, where they will hear, or where they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. Now I want to go to Jeremiah 1 and verse 7 to show you that they said the same thing to Jeremiah. They would not listen to him. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. They were commanded, he was commanded. Can you imagine being a prophet, being sent to people that will not hear you? Can you imagine how the prophets felt? Hallelujah. That's like Jonah when he went to Nineveh. What did he say in his heart? These people aren't going to repent. They're not going to hear me. I don't want to go to them. Let me go down and jump on a ship and go someplace else. These guys ain't going to hear you. But the Lord knew where he was at and caused him to end up in the belly of a whale. 
Hallelujah, to do his will. Then he went and did his will. And guess what? These people repented. Do you know God said to Israel, I send prophets unto you, and you will not repent. But if I send them unto the Gentiles, or the what you call the ungodly, they will repent. Hallelujah. That's why God has chosen a people out of the Gentile nation. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says in the book of Acts, I think it's the 28th chapter, said that they will hear you. Yes. And we do. We hear him. We do hear him. We hear we the voice him. of the Lord. And we love him. Hallelujah. I have people say, you don't know, I, I don't know the voice of the Lord. Oh, yes. I say, yes, you do. Yes. That's why you're sitting here and you're redeemed. Because right. you've heard the voice of the Lord when he's speaking to you. That's right. He's speaking to you through, uh, through other people. But you still hear his voice. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's, now let's go back to verse 8 of Ezekiel chapter 2. But thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be, thou, be not thou rebellious like the rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I have given thee. Hallelujah. He says to eat the words. And the words that he eats are bitter but they're also sweet. You ever heard of a bittersweet experience? That's what eating the word of the Lord is. The Lord's word is sweet, but he's sent to a bitter nation. People will not hear. Hallelujah. So let's go to Revelation chapter 10 and verse 9. This also happened to John in the book of Revelation. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. Hallelujah. And he said unto me, Take it, eat it up. It shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Hallelujah. Who was John preaching to or bringing these to? To the nation of Israel. And also to the seven churches of, of Asia. Do you want to know who Revelation is written to? The seven churches of Asia. Because what was about to take place would affect the whole Christian nation. Because if you read through the book of Acts, who continually persecuted the Christians? The Jewish nation. There were people that rejected Christ. Saul was one of them at one time. But God said, isn't it hard for you to kick against the pricks? He became one of us. Paul was one of us that preached the apostolic gospel. Hallelujah. Let's continue on. Let's go to verse 9 of Ezekiel chapter 2. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. What I want to talk to you about is this book. The book of Revelation talks about that book. Mm -hmm. That book is the new covenant book. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell you Ezekiel and Revelation is a parallel book. Mm -hmm. It's all talking about the new covenant Mm -hmm. that Christ would bring. Hallelujah. It says, And when I looked, behold, a hand was set on me, and lo, a roll broke. A roll of a book was therein. And he spread, spread it before me, And it was written within and without, and there was written there lamentations, mournings, and woe. Hallelujah. You read the book of Revelation? It's one woe after another after another until the final woe. Hallelujah. And that's what he is saying here. Hallelujah. There should be mourning. Many people wanted the day of the Lord, but he said, don't you know it's a day of destruction and desolation to them? Not to us, but to them that he is speaking to, the prophets. Hallelujah. And I want to go to Revelation chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. And I want to talk about this book. Hallelujah. Revelation 5, 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book, written within, and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. You know what that makes you makes you think of? It makes you think of the Ten Commandments. Let's go to Exodus 32 and verse 15. 
The Ten Commandments were written on both sides. That shows you it was a covenant, the Old Covenant. The New Covenant is written on both sides. That's how they knew this book is the book of the New Covenant. When it is sealed with seven seals, it means that it's a covenant. All the ancient world knew that. The churches that were in Asia, they all knew when the seven seals were mentioned that we're talking about a covenant. Hallelujah. So we're talking about the new covenant that would come through our Lord Jesus Christ. So Exodus 32 and 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides, on the one side and on the other were they written. That's how they know he's talking about a covenant. Because the Old Testament was a covenant written on both sides. Hallelujah. And there were always three words that are used by John to show you that it was a covenant. And throughout the whole world, or throughout the whole Bible, I should say, these are the three things that always accompanied a covenant. The Spirit, Hallelujah, the Day, and the Voice. They were always there at the giving of a covenant. Verse 2, it says, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, okay, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. They already knew it was a covenant, but they said, Who is worthy to open up this book, this covenant book? Hallelujah. They become very sad. Hallelujah, because there was no one found that could open that book. But guess who it is that opens the book? Let's continue on. The Old Testament covenant was always the spirit, as the spirit of the cloud, which represents the spirit that came upon Mount Sinai. There was a voice, hallelujah, and it was a day, the day of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, because the Bible says the law was given by the angels. The book of Hebrews tells you that. So there was angels there. That shows you the and the creator of the and the universal sovereign, the son of man, the second Adam, the conqueror of the nations, the possessor of the church, all of which are concerned with the prophecies of the coming of the New Testament. Jesus was called the son of man. He's called the, he's called the high priest. He's called the mediator. He came to fulfill all these laws. Now let's go to Amos 5 and verse 18. I want to talk to you about the day of the, day of the Lord. Israel wanted and they desired to see of the Lord, but because they did not know the voice of the prophets, they did not know it was a day of destruction and desolation. See how important it is that we hear and know the voice of the prophets so we can interpret the New Testament in the manner that they did? I'll tell you a secret. The New Testament, you really don't need to interpret it. Because no. what it is, is the interpretation of all the prophecies of the Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't it tell you where the Christ was to be born? Yep. Didn't it say there was a child would be born? Bethlehem. Did it not say that it would be conceived through a virgin? Yeah. Through the seed of the woman? Yeah. Hallelujah. All these things are being fulfilled in the New Testament and the New Covenant. Jesus brought the new covenant through the shedding of his blood. Hallelujah. So we know that you know, when there's a covenant, there's always the spirit and the word and the voice of God. Amos 5.18, Woe to you that desire the day of the Lord. To when, what end is it to you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Can you imagine looking for what they thought would be light? It was actually darkness to them. Now I want to go to Isaiah chapter 13, verse 6, and then verse 9. I want to tell you how terrible the day of the Lord is. But can you imagine these people wanting that this day should come? To us it was beautiful because it came along with salvation. But to them it meant judgment. Isaiah 13, verse 6, Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall be as a destruction from who? From the Almighty. Hallelujah. 
So that tells you why were they looking for that day? They shouldn't have been. They should have been repenting as the prophets had told them. Now let's go to verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land, the land when it's always spoken of in the Bible is Israel, desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Hallelujah. Sinners were the people that just rejected God. They rejected the, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 30 and verse 3. It says, For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near. A cloudy day, it shall be a time of the heathen. Hallelujah. How many of you are looking forward to a cloudy day? No. Or would you like a day where the sun is shining and it's beautiful out? Yes. You see what the interjection of the cloudy day is? It's talking about a day of destruction. Darkness. Hallelujah. That's why the prophecy that most people think is the uh, rapture of the church is really talking about nope. the destruction of Jerusalem. Yeah, it said that you will come in a cloud. Yeah. And the cloud in the Old Testament meant it's destruction. Not, not and they did not perceive it. Just like the people today don't perceive it. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's not talking about being raptured out of here. He's talking about the day of judgment upon on Israel. That's why it's so important to understand the scriptures. Amen. Yeah. To show you this, it was the destruction of Jerusalem. Now let's go to the book of Luke chapter 21, verse 20 and 22. And here in the New Testament it's called the day of vengeance. Okay? <laughs> For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. It said that is a day of vengeance. And how would they know when this day would come? Hallelujah. Verse 22. Or I guess I didn't read 20. Let's see. Go back to verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. And what city does it tell you? Jerusalem. It's Jerusalem. When was Jerusalem destroyed? 66 to 70 AD was the judgment of God upon the city of Jerusalem. History records that to you. Clearly. Yeah. It clearly records it to you. Yeah. And guess what else? There was Josephus who wrote about the, the, the destruction of Jerusalem. And everything he wrote was in complete agreement yeah. to with the Bible. Where well, these people within themselves, they would do things like they would destroy their own food. Because if someone rose up a false Christ and said, I will deliver you. There's a man called John Levi that was there during the destruction who told them to destroy everything. I will deliver you. Proclaiming he was the Christ. But he wasn't. The Christ already came, but now he's coming in judgment. Hallelujah. In verse 22, For these be the days of vengeance, that all things were written, which are written be fulfilled. What we're just reading in the book of Ezekiel, this is the fulfillment of them. The Lord is telling you. But he says when you see the armies surrounding where? Yes, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Know that their desolation is nigh. So what is he talking about? Destruction of the old religious system? Yep. Yes. Because Judaism is apostate. It still is. It, is. it has nothing to do with God. Nope. I'm sorry, but that's, that's just that's the way it is. Yes, it is. Because they speak against Christ. Yes. They call him a false prophet. Yep. They call him well, every name in the book. Yep. But they don't call him what he is. The, Lord. the Christ. The Lord God himself. They do not recognize him as God. Hallelujah. And that's why judgment came upon them, because they rejected all the prophets that came to them. Hallelujah. Now let's go to verse 3. In the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 3. I'm going to show you that this is the New Testament covenant that he is speaking about. But there's only one that is able to fulfill it. And guess what? Revelation tells you who it is. 
Hallelujah. And no man in heaven and earth, neither under the earth, was able to open a book, neither to look therein. Why couldn't they do it? They weren't worthy. And no one. The Bible says the Lord looked throughout his whole creation, and there was none. None that could save except yes. God himself. Amen. And that's why he came as a man. Hallelujah. And then no one could, fill, could fulfill even the conditions of a mediator. David, none of the Old Testament. I, or, um, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, none of them were able to fulfill the job of a mediator. So who became our mediator? Jesus is our mediator of the new covenant. Hallelujah. The priest himself was considered a sinner in the Old Testament. Do you know he had before he offered sacrifices for everyone else? He had to offer one for himself because he was a sinner. But Jesus, he knew no sin. He was not a sinner. He was righteous. Hallelujah. So this you'll find, if those you want to look it up, it's in Hebrews 5, 1 through 3. It says that uh, the, the, high, the priest himself had to offer a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to verse 4. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open to read the book, neither to look thereon. And I want to close with verse 5. It's one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible. Hallelujah. And one of the elders, or one of the redeemed, remember I told you Sunday morning who the elders were? They're the redeemed of the Lord sitting around the throne and worshiping him. One of the elders said unto me, weep not. We found somebody. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, or the descendant of David, just like he promised the Old Testament prophets that he would build him a house had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals. To me, that's one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible. Because it declares to you from the Lion, the lion of Judah, yes. the Lamb of God, He is the one that is able yes. to open up the New Testament book, which is salvation through the Lamb of God, yes. who takes away the sins of the world. The goats and all these animal sacrifices could not. These priests could not be a mediator because there's only one mediator between God and man. That's the man Christ Jesus. But that man Christ Jesus was also God in the flesh. Hallelujah. So God became our Savior. Just like she read today in Isaiah 12. He said literally that God has become my salvation. Yes. Or literally said, Jesus literally means salvation. Yeah. So God has become my Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's why I tell you Ezekiel and Revelations, they speak of the same thing. They prophesied of the destruction of Jerusalem. In the book of Revelation, it is fulfilled because they rejected the very Christ that was sent to them to bring a new covenant. See, the covenant was never intended for you and I originally. He said, I'll make a covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Yeah. But because they rejected it, yeah. they rejected the mediator, they rejected everything, they rejected the Christ. And that was the ultimate insult to God yeah. when, they rep when they rejected the their Savior. Mm -hmm. He said, in the Old Testament, they have rejected me. Yeah. How many times did they reject God? When they wanted a king, what did God say? They rejected me. They're not rejecting you, Samuel, they but they're rejecting me. Yeah. See, the nation of Israel continued to reject their God and to serve idols. Hallelujah. If you read through the book of uh, Ezekiel, there's part of it that is gross to be reading of the abominations that these people did before their God. But thank to the Lord we have the New Testament. We have our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And this is why I wanted to explain this to you. Because there's some confusion in this area. But the Old Testament the book of Revelation is a covenant book. And it's a new covenant brought by your Lord, Jesus Christ. Can we stand tonight? Hallelujah.
And thank the one that brought our salvation to us. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and praises and power and dominion. Worthy is the Lamb that sits upon the throne, the Lamb that opened up the book. Hallelujah, the one of the Lion, Lion of Judah, O God, the Lion of Judah. Hallelujah, thank you for opening the door of salvation. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you for the new covenant. Hallelujah, that you spoke of throughout all the prophets of the Old Testament. You spoke of your coming to establish a covenant, a new covenant. Hallelujah, the old one has been done away with. Hallelujah, and the new one is here through our Lord Jesus Christ. So let me give you glory. Let me give you honor and praises for worthy thou art. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. And Jesus, you are that Lamb, hallelujah. The one that redeemed us and saved us. So let us worship you tonight, O oh God, and give you glory and honor and praises. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a petition for Sarah. Hallelujah, because Sarah not feeling very well that last week. Uh, the sister prepared for his general times. Sarah was very sick. She told me that Sunday. We going to pray for her. And, uh, and, and for the brothers and sisters that are not here tonight. In Jesus' name. Lord Amen. Jesus, thank you, Lord, my Savior, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For those that decided. To enter into your covenant through baptism in your name. Touch Sarah, Lord Jesus, let nothing come between her and her baptism this Saturday, Lord. We ask you to touch her body and heal her. Deliver her, make her strong, Lord Jesus. With this decision that she has made, O oh God, to follow you through your death and burial and resurrection, now she will enter into the new covenant because the new covenant is for the remission of sins. Hallelujah, just like the old testament. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. No remission, O Lord. Thank you for her decision. Thank you, Lord, for those that are not here tonight. We ask your blessing upon them. I'm going to pray for Juan Vasquez, too. She, uh, he loses her mother. Uh, that, uh, the Lord give it touching for uh, Brother Juan Vasquez. Yes. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for touching. Hallelujah. Brother Juan, Jesus, I thank you, Lord, my God, to give her motivation. Lord, my God, Jesus, to give the spirit, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord my God, Jesus, to give her peace, peace, my God, to you, Lord my God, I have the spirit. Thank you, Lord my God, to give her peace, peace, my God, to Jesus, to give her peace, peace, my God, to you, Lord my God, to give her peace, peace, my God, to you, Lord my God, to give her peace, peace, my God, to you, Lord my God, to give her peace, peace, my God, to you, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray for Sister Lisa and uh, her body. In Jesus' name, we get a completely uh, healing everything. Jesus. And God, God, supply chain, head. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord Jesus, Hallelujah, my God, Lord. Jesus. You're the provider, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, my God. Tonight, Jesus, and your goodness and mercy, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, hallelujah, Dios, Hallelujah, Lord, Lord, I ask Lord, you to touch her. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, my Savior, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah the help that she desires. That she wants, but she does not know how to attain it. Oh, thank you, Lord, my Savior, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, my God, my Messiah. By the power of your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Cristo y en la sangre del Cordero, bendecido, alabado, Señor. Thank you, Lord. You reach us in goodness and mercy, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. You catch and you favor the Lord. Thank you, Lord, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe in God to hear to hear and eyes to see, Lord. Thank you, Lord, my God, to complete that victory of your people, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for mercy and goodness. Thank in Jesus' Jesus, name, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, your goodness. Oh, Lord, your faithfulness forever. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I'm sorry. For, for Sam. For Sam Biafant? Yeah. Oh, thank Jesus. you, Jesus. Hallelujah, oh, Jesus. Jesus. We come to you once again, Lord, for Melissa. Extend your hand of love upon her, Lord, and cause her to recover quickly, Lord Jesus. By the power of your name, we invoke over her. Hallelujah, we know that you are with her, and you are calling her unto yourself, O oh God. Hallelujah, touch your Lord. Touch your body, touch your mind. Touch your whole being, Lord, that she can accept what you have for her, Lord Jesus. Touch Sam be upon, Lord Jesus. Minister to him tonight, O oh God. You know his needs, O oh Lord Jesus. But his greatest need is of you, Lord. Hallelujah, so we just ask you to minister to his needs. And you would be glorified. Thank you, Lord, Lord, Glorify through God. his life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You mercy. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,